Is the Fed even more important for the bank stocks than most investors think? Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Eric Chemi, joined by Ed Mills, financial policy analyst at FBR. Ed, what's going to be more important to bank investors now that we've seen Trump take an office already? Changes in interest rate targets or changes in regulatory framework by the Fed? I think by far it's the regulatory framework because what you have is that right now uh, the Fed since the passage of Dodd-Frank has been by far and away the most aggressive regulator and the group of folks that are there are about to change and to quote Donald Trump change bigly. Uh, we're going to have a new supervision uh, head as a vice chair of supervision and in the next 18 months more than a majority of the board can turn over, especially after Yellen's turn expires. Let's talk about for a lot of traders, a lot of investors, they think about the Fed as basically, for better or worse, they're the interest rate guys. But we know they yes. do a lot of regulation, but what are some of the examples of the regulation that they do that maybe most normal investors don't know about? Sure, it's an alphabet soup of regulation. We have the SLR, we have CCAR, we have the HQLA, we have the Volcker Rule. Yeah. Most of the tightening that has gone on in this economy, I would argue, has been on the regulatory side of the House. Um, basically, over the last eight years, and especially since the passage of Dodd-Frank, banks haven't necessarily been allowed to do what they've traditionally been able to do. They've been closely regulated, almost like utilities, to the point where they've had to make a lot of business decisions where things that used to be profitable no longer are profitable because of the higher capital standards and the risk weightings that they're putting on it. So going forward, if we get changes to things that most people have never heard of, that's a big change in the risk that they can take on and the loan activity they can do, and ultimately the capital management that also goes along with the stress test. So they become much more attractive stocks as well as kind of much more attractive in the activities they can do for investors who are looking for some level of growth. That's a good phrase you mentioned, regulatory tightening. Like we heard about quantitative easing, you could have regulatory easing, regulatory tightening. So it's an interesting way to frame it. If they don't want to move interest rates or they can't, that's another avenue for them to do something with. Let's talk a little bit about a recent note you put out on Friday. Dan Nason, I think his name is, potentially being... Yep. Uh, appointed to the Fed to do this regulatory work to, I guess, vice chair, the head of the regula uh, regulatory sum. Talk about that a little bit and what his bio suggests, how that might affect banks maybe in a positive way. Sure. So um, the Dodd-Frank Act created this job called vice chair of supervision. This is the person at the Federal Reserve in charge of all regulatory policy. And since Dodd-Frank, no one has actually been appointed to that position. Dan Tarillo, one of the Fed governors, has been filling in almost um, on an ad hoc basis. And Dan Tarillo is arguably the most powerful man in financial regulatory policy since Alexander Hamilton. So this new um, kind of appointee would be Dan Tarillo's boss. There is no way of stopping him if he gets appointed because there's no longer a filibuster in the Senate. And he comes from the Bush administration, the Bush Treasury, came from GE Capital, someone who's much more kind of free market centered versus Dan Trillo's you know, very regulatory centric model. And so I think if he gets appointed and approved, Dan Trillo probably leaves. And that is, you know, the second and third seat that changes at the Fed Board of Governors, which is only seven members. Next year, Yellen will go. Later next year, Stan Fisher will go. That's up to five of the seven seats. And these seats actually are for 14 year terms. So Donald Trump is going to have his team at the Fed over the next 18 months that is going to fundamentally alter the direction of way in which they have done regulatory policy, much more easing, much more options for the banks to kind of be banks again. So sounds like your bottom line is you're positive on banks if you put this entire picture together. Is that right? You're bank positive? Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things that I've been asked so frequently since the election has occurred is kind of what legislation is going to happen on the Hill and what does that mean to the banking space? And what I would argue is not a single bill has to pass on the Hill to be fundamental changes in the banks and kind of the way in which they're able to operate. And that's why I actually think you see a lot of these banks saying, don't change Dodd-Frank because they know they're going to get a lot of the changes, even if Congress doesn't act. And you don't have to go through folks like 
Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren up on the Hill. I think that is the best little nugget right there. You don't have to worry about the laws. You just change the makeup of who's regulating those laws, and it could be exactly what the banks want. Thank you, Ed Mills, for joining us here thank on you. Trading Nation. Really insightful stuff. Really appreciate it. Thanks again to our guest, and thank you for joining us here. I'm Eric Chemi. We'll see you next time. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.